<laughs> it's just some tailor. <laughs> Child, these days, we are fashion designers. So tailor is a job fashion designers. Eh? Oh, oh man. yeah, it's Child, really cool. You know, it's just a tailor who gave it to you. Yeah, but the song. Oh, you are thinking of thriller. Thriller. Oh, okay. That's good. It's good. You like good music. Okay, good morning. Good morning, Bernardino. How, how, how are you doing? I'm has, well. has the portfolio been done? No. Take a picture. Neither of, of them have been done. Take a picture of the two and bring them to me. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll do It'll be tricky it. because of where they're located, but I'll try. Oh, you can send the dispatch rider <laughs> <laughs> to take the photos. I, when I get the pictures, I'll do something. Anyone who uses the uh, main Kwabanya Road, yes. Pokrasi Road, yes. that intersection yes. will know what I'm, that portal I'm talking about. It's very big. And the Atomic Hatcho Road opposite Ghana Atomic Energy. You know that ditch. That mm. ditch. In the middle of the road. In front of Chris Hesetete's house. I'll hey. say it again. Wow. Yes. Oh, Everyone knows okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I've seen it before. Mm-hmm. It's for those who are coming towards Atomic Junction. Yep. So if you're coming from Atomic Down, going towards Atomic Junction, it's on your right. It's on your right. Yes, I've in seen the it. right lane. It's, it's wild. It's horrible. It's deadly. If you don't know that thing is if, there if it's and rain, it's dark, if it's raining and you are using like you you can you can destroy your car. Serious, it's bad. Yeah, you can, even, you can even die. It's, yeah, it's that bad. It's as bad. I've seen it on the right. Yep. There used Bad. to be some NGO be in that area. In that co- yeah, I know that place. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into the papers. <laughs> I know that rule. The Daily Graphic says, Extend compulsory retirement age. Minister designate mixed case for sustained pension scheme. Mm. Ghana donates election materials to Niger. Military will be phased out from police operations. That's according to Ambrose Derry. And Supreme Court hears three issues today. Hmm, the Ghanaian Times. Health alert. Ebola virus scare. Ghana Health Service places health facilities on high alert. Also, strengthen psychological counseling for security services. This is coming from a clinical psychologist. COVID-19 update. Death toll shoots up to 561. Ghana loses $19.8 million through fraudulent activities. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. The Daily Guide says, I need Jimensa to make my case. Mahama. MPP starts member registration. GHS issues Ebola alert and court threatens to leave Obinim. Mm. Mm, the Chronicle. Rawlings legacy in flames as Alote vows to vomit snakes and frogs. Koku also dares leadership to push him out. I insist we have created three million jobs. This is Ignatius Bafwe while he was uh, vetted yesterday. And Noguchi to expand COVID-19 testing capacity. The Daily Statesman says, cite Dr. Ayene for contempt of court. Nanabi urges Supreme Court. Three million jobs created under Nanado's first term, says Bafwe Wa. G has to release SHS placement on Sunday. And secondly, Takwadi residents shun assembly workers over COVID-19. The new crusading guide in the matter of the $134 million judgment debt, Ejakun fires back and says it was a cabinet decision. Also, Ekufuado creates 3 million jobs, says the employment minister designate. AFCFTA Secretary General praises Tabia Group for excellent operations. And I'll correct lapses in school feeding program. This is from gender minister designate. Sarah Adwa Safo. The BNFT's front page says domestic tax revenue hit 31 billion cities in first 10 months of pandemic year. U.S. businesses renew investment interest despite COVID-19. Court orders GCNet to pay workers as determined by NLC. Company makes rest of workers redundant. And it says 15 financial institutions and PSPs offering GHQR to their customers. The business finder, aid crunch, look within, curb illicit outflows, Professor Abo urges African governments. Also, government creates 3 million jobs in four years. That's Bafwe was speaking again. And Ecobank and others support women-led businesses. Let me take you. Uh, let me take you online. Give you a few quick headlines. I'm starting from the BBC this morning. It's a story mm. that is really important for the work we do. Facebook blocks news content in Australia. <laughs> now it's serious because there was a law being proposed to force the company to pay news producers for content, mm. and Facebook is not happy. And so they said that you can't share news on Facebook in the whole of Australia. Now I'll give you some details of this story later. I think it's a big story for the work we do because usually. What happens in those parts of the world eventually happens here. <laughs> so we should watch that carefully. Ghana News Agency. A Dubai acts as president's rep at Finance Ministry. We've heard this already. And hybrid waste to energy project can control Ghana's energy and sanitation problems. This is something we've said on this show 
countless occasions. Meanwhile, limited access to health facilities is causing rise in COVID-19 deaths. This is also on the Ghana News Agency website. If you go to citynewsroom.com, I will engage traditional and opinion leaders on which camp issues. This is Adjoa Safo. Again, this story, 3 million jobs created by Akufado administration, according to his uh, minister-designate. And, of course, the big ones in terms of the court case, Supreme Court resumes sitting today. That's on citynewsroom.com. A couple other stories. Ayaga wants retirement age extended to 65. And Ablakwa says ministerial nominees are fleeing from KIA COVID-19 testing contract. If you go to majoronline.com, a couple of stories there. Ghana Railway Development Authority CEO Richard Dumbo dead. And guess what? COVID-19. Also, join this investigation suspect COVID-19 patient share floor with other others at Kolebu. And meanwhile, cannabis is not legalized for recreational use. This is Ambrose Derry. Star FM, lead story. I was not involved in Frontier Airport contract at Joa Safo. Also, uh, Akufuadu has created 3 million jobs according to Bafwe Wa and criminality of LGBT non-negotiable at Joa Safo as well. Guys, so much to talk about. Let's start with the big one. Yeah, let's get into uh, the daily graphic. I don't know whether you want to do vetting court. Okay. Uh, extend compulsory retirement age. Minister mm. designate makes case for sustained pension scheme. Now, the minister designate for employment and labor relations, Mr. Ignatius Bafuewa, has said the current short working period does not augur well for the national pension scheme and has consequently argued for the extension of the compulsory retirement age of public workers to ensure the sustainability of the scheme. And he said, um, Quote, I have raised this issue on several platforms, and even if you look at the sustainability of the pension scheme, when you have a short working period, it doesn't augur well. He said in response to a question from the Member of Parliament for Boku Central, Mr. Mahama Yariga, on the need to extend the working age of public workers. Now, the story to, the story went on to look at several angles of his vetting, mm. retirement age, private bill, unemployment insurance, casual labor. Do you have any headlines from what I, he said? I, I do. In the new crusading guide, Ekufuado creates three million jobs, says the employment minister designate. The Ekufuado administration created about three million jobs in its first term, according to the employment and labor relations minister nominee, Ignatius Bafuewa. Quote, the last time we reported was in September 2020, and the figure was around three million jobs. He said this during his vetting on Wednesday, February the 17th. When probed on specifics, he said he would make the relevant figures available to the committee. He said, on a number of occasions, I've come to this house and given these figures out already. But the committee also raised concerns uh, on discrepancies between the figures he gave and what was contained in his handing over notes. In the notes, they indicated that 2.7 million jobs were created, with 2.3 million of those jobs being under planting for food and jobs, hey. and three... Yeah and 350,000 of those being in the public sector. But Mr. Iwa explained that the handing over notes were prepared in June in line with the Transitional Provisions Act. So he said, I can't come before this committee and lie. I've indicated my readiness to supply you with the information by close of day. And uh, he went on to talk about how the ministry arrives at his figures because he was questioned on that as well. In fact, if you go to majoronline.com, minority is demanding detailed breakdown of the 3 million jobs government claims it has created. Story says the minority in parliament is demanding a detailed breakdown of the over 3 million jobs government claim it had created under the Akufuado first term in office. The demand follows a disclosure made by the minister, as you just read. Now, they said uh, the minority leader, who doubles as a ranking member of the committee, Aaron Idrisu, demanded a breakdown of the said jobs created. Quote, Minister Nomini, can you state how the 3 million jobs were created in the distribution? You want to share the statistics with us, sector by sector, Haruna quizzed. And of course, as you said, the minister said, I will supply the information to the committee. Still from the vetting, a couple more stories. Adra Safu says, I was not privy to the procurement processes for the COVID test uh, company. That's Frontiers. Mm -hmm. That story simply will not go away. <laughs> and it, it, it <laughs> reads, former Minister for State for Procurement, Sarah Adra Safu says she has no knowledge of the procurement processes adopted prior to contracting the firm conducting COVID-19 tests at Kotkan International Airport. She also said, 
She hasn't seen the contract for the deal. She was speaking during her vetting. A couple of other things that came out during her vetting. Yes, uh, and the Crusading Guide as well has this story. I'll correct lapses in school feeding program. And she talked about the fact that there are some lapses. They ought to look at it as a nation and as parliament and as a gender committee of parliaments. She said, when I'm given the nod, I will engage this house and the committee as well to see how these lapses can be streamlined properly. Be it NPP, NDC, we all accept that there are challenges. Sometimes there are intermediaries even in between the caterers, which compromise even the quality of food being served to the children. She said, I give the committee my utmost assurance, as I did earlier, that mm. we will look into it and do the needful. A few other things she said, I'll engage traditional opinion leaders on which camps. She even used the word rebranding mm -hmm. of which camps or renovating of which camps. And then uh, then the funny thing that happened. So, Adjoa Safu's vetting was soft because of health considerations. This is Mahama Yargan. The story says that the Boku Central MP has defended the appointment committee's soft, quote-unquote, vetting of Adjoa Safo. Now, speaking on Eyewitness News, he said the committee did not stress her uh, on health grounds. Before we she came, we discovered that she had just delivered a baby. And so naturally, we felt that somebody who had just delivered, we should just postpone a vetting. But we didn't postpone it because we just got the information. So they therefore decided to make the vetting short so she could go back and do other things. So that's basically what he said. Well, if you um, stay with some more vetting news, on Tuesday, Mr. Ambrose Derry mm -hmm. was vetted, and on page 16 of the Daily Graphic, an, an angle of that has been covered. It says military will be phased out from police operations. Now, the minister designate for the interior, Mr. Ambrose Derry, has indicated that the Ghana Police Service will soon phase out military presence in its operations. He said the government was working to resolve some capacity challenges facing the police and and that once that was done, mm -hmm. the presence of the army in police operations would be completely phased out. Now, mm -hmm. he also went on to speak about um, Ebola. Mm -hmm. Now, he, And he indicated that the government has started a process to intensify border patrols following the outbreak of Ebola in Guinea. He said Ghana had over 200 unapproved routes mm -hmm. along its borders which needed critical attention in order to prevent the importation of the disease into the country. Can we go to the court now? There's a big day in court today. What yes. are the details? So the 2020 election petition continues today. That's according to the Daily Graphic. Mm -hmm. With three main items on the bill. One, an application for stay of proceedings. Mm -hmm. Two, a review application. And three, the closing submissions uh, of lawyers for the parties. Now at its sitting last, last Thursday, the court had announced that it would fix a date for judgment of the petition today. However, this will depend on how it deals with the review application and the application for stay of proceedings filed by the petitioner, former President John Mahama. The two applications were filed last Tuesday. Mm. Okay. So we'll be live on City TV and City mm. FM. Koki, let's come back to you. Now, you read something about uh, an investigation done by Joy News yes. on... Yes. Yeah, where I, have, I have the details COVID. here. Okay. Now, here in the Ghanaian Times, in the center spread, it's all about health stories let's from Ebola to COVID, etc. But the Ghana Medical Association is speaking. Mm -hmm. They are saying that the spike in COVID-19 deaths in the country is partly caused by limited access to health care facilities. That's true. They also lament the inadequate number of medical personnel handling critical to severe COVID-19 cases and said it was contributing to the rising deaths. Mm. Dr. Justice Yangson, who's the General Secretary of the Association, in an interview with Ghana News Agency, said people kept losing their lives because there were no adequate COVID-19 intensive care units mm. with enough functional beds for patients. Quote, we do not have enough specialized facilities to take care of people with severe infections and the increase in deaths simply means more critical to severe cases are being recorded, but they do not receive the needed attention. And it goes on to list more of the data. Currently, we've got 86 patients in severe condition, mm. 29 in critical condition. He says to manage this effectively, the government needs to deploy adequate human resource and enough logistics across the country. Still on health yeah. and still on COVID, mm -hmm. Joy News Investigations suspected COVID patients share floor with others at Kolebu. Story says Joy News Investigations have uncovered sus uh, persons suspected to have contracted COVID-19 are uh, being held on the same floor as other patients, including pregnant women at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. This is the VIP floor of the capital's biggest referral hospital's maternity block in Accra. The reason is simple. Like other hospitals, the places designated for COVID-19 cases are full. And then the background is given. Then there's a very sad one here of a man who we've interviewed on this program a few times. Ghana Railway Development Authority CEO Richard Dombo is dead. Now, CEO of GRDA, Richard Dombo, has died. Sources say he succumbed to COVID-19 complications on Wednesday, February 17, 2021. Mr. Dumbo has reportedly had a brief stint with health issues since he contracted the novel coronavirus January this year. He's not returned to work 
due to the toll it had on him and was self-isolating at his home until his sad death. Mm. He was appointed by the president as uh, the CEO of the railway company in 2017. Now, pol- he, politically, he was the son of the late chief Simon Dombo, one of the founders of the Dankwa Dombo Buzia political tradition. And until his appointment, he was operations manager for Southwest Rail, one of the largest rail operators in the UK, and played various roles in that sector. So that's uh, something for us to just keep the seriousness on the COVID thing. It's, it's Charlie, it's, it's ravaging. It, it is. It's ravaging. Actually. So um, let's move to other issues, Nathan. If you go to page 13 mm. of the Daily Guide, that's a <laughs> strange story. It says, suspected armed robbers have reportedly returned an amount of 51,900 mm-hmm. Ghana cities they robbed from their victim over the weekend mm. in the Upper West Regional Capital. Wow. Mm-hmm. The robbers' unusual gesture followed the invocation of eight deities <laughs> by <laughs> owners of the robbed money. <laughs> According to sources at the Regional Crime Office, the money was dropped at the doorstep of one of the owners Quick. who earlier had been subjected to torture by the gun-wielding robbers mm. when they descended on him. The money belonged to a group of traders who ply routes between Wa and Leo, that's a trading town in Burkina Faso. <laughs> so they invoked eight deities. <laughs> yes. And that made the robbers bring the money yes, back. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so in that same area, we'll do everything possible to end armed robberies in Upper East. This mm-hmm. is not Upper West, Upper East, according to the IGP. Now, IGP James Opombo, who has reiterated his commitment to end the incessant armed robbery attacks in the Upper East region. Now, the region has in recent times recorded an alarming rate of armed robbery attacks, particularly on the roads, resulting in the death of traders and residents. Now, the IGP visited two robbery scenes at Katiu and Pusu Namongo in the Kasana and Kanao West and Talensi districts where a tobacco trader and a cattle trader were robbed and killed, he placed to deal with the menace urgently. Now, after his assessment of the situation, he told City News that his outfit was mapping out a sustainable strategy to end the armed robbery in the region. Mm. Yeah, so that's great to know that he, he went there. Right. Of course, the tobacco traders have called off their strike following yes. some of these assurances. Speaking of crime, Ghana loses $19.8 million through fraudulent activities. This is the Ghanaian Times. Ghana has lost that amount through fraud and criminal activities last year as against $11 million the previous year. This was revealed by Assistant Commissioner of Police, Dr. Herbert Gustav Yankson, who is director of the Child Protection Digital Laboratory and Cyber Crime Unit. He said additionally, they recovered $101,000, six cars, three plots of land bought with proceeds of fraud. And he said cases reported to the unit include cyber fraud, sex image abuse, Mm. child pornography, Facebook account crime, and the victims or complainants were male. Hmm. He said they also um, had cases involving charlatans advertisements, Mm. illegal sale of examination questions, forgery of documents, sale of pre-registered subscriber identity module, that's SIM cards, and publication of false news. Charlie, the crime is increasing, you know, cyber crime. Why? So be careful, guys. Protect Let's go your to education. Identity. What's yes, happening? Yes, yes. If you go to page three of the Daily Statesman, it says a GS to release SHS placement on Sunday. Okay. Mm. Now, barring any last-minute hitches, this year's senior high school place senior high school placement will be out on Sunday, February twenty-one. That's according to Professor Kwesi Opokwamankwa, who's the DG of the GHS, uh, mm-hmm. GES. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The placement will cover candidates, both school and private, who wrote the BEC in 2020, as well as other re-entrants. In all, about 525,000 qualified BEC candidates will be seeking placement into 721 senior high technical and vocational schools of their choices, mm-hmm. which have declared about 535,000 vacancies. All right, could we, I wanted two stories. There's one in the mm. Chronicle about the NDC, Koku Anidoho, and things. And yeah. then Daily Guide front page has some updates on the Eugene Ahin um, divorce yes. case mm-hmm. as well. So just give me those two quick stories. All right. The Chronicle, Rawlings' legacy in flames. So here it is on page three. The late former president, Jerry John Rawlings, signed the NDC into being as a political party with his blood. But just two months after his passing into eternity, confusion has rocked the party with people who worked closely with the late president, Atta Mills, alleging that they are being persecuted and hounded out of the parties. One of such persons is Mr. Samuel Koku Anuduho. On several platforms, he has indicated that there are orchestrations against 
against him for reasons that he stood loyal to his former boss, President Mills. To ensure the sustenance of the legacy of the president, Kokua Nyudoho has founded and is working as the executive director of the Atta Mills Institute, which in the 2020 general elections participated as an observer. Mm. He openly told the media during the, the case against uh, their national chairman, Ufusuan Pofu, that he, Koku, had been disrespected by General Secretary General Mosquito because he chose to contest him. So he's very, very bitter. Is that what he said? You also vomit snakes and frogs. And <laughs> frogs, yes. So this is Alote Jacobs they're referring to here. Oh, Lord. Get into that part. Okay. So Alote Jacobs, and they call him the educated fisherman mm. on Asempa FM, said that he has refused to write an apology letter to the party's disciplinary committee as he was asked to do. Mm. According to him, the party wanted him to apologize because he said President Gufuado is a matured politician. Quote, and I will say it today, that Nanado is a matured politician. They told me not to speak for the NDC, and you expect me to speak for the NDC, he asked rhetorically. He said, the NDC brought it out that they've suspended me. It's the same thing they did to Koku. Politics is a game of numbers. If you see a circle, you have to draw a bigger circle. Not that because you are general secretary. Okay. And yeah, he goes on and on, on, on and on. Of that. On. Okay, yeah. Nathan. Well, yes, it says, this one says, Eugenahin's wife abandons properties, abuse claims. Hmm. Now, wife of Eugenahin, the acting director, of comms at the presidency has amended her initial claims of massive property grabbing by the official. Mm -hmm. This was after Mr. Ahim filed a response to the divorce petition filed by Mrs. Gloria Asan Ahim, in which he in which he served notice to put her to strict proof regarding the claims she made in her initial petition, mm. which had gone viral on social and traditional media. In an amended petition filed at an Accra High Court on Monday, February 15, a copy of which um, a copy of which was in the possession of Daily Guide, Mrs. Ahin has now backtracked on several of her earlier claims following the response filed by her husband. Mr. Ahin denied what he de described as malicious claims hmm. made against him by his estranged wife. Mm. Let me take you to the BBC. A couple of stories I'm concerned about. Facebook blocks Australian users from viewing or sharing news. This is important. Facebook has blocked Australian users from sharing or viewing news content on the platform, causing much alarm over public access to key information. Now, this comes in response to a proposal or a proposed law which would make tech giants pay for news content on their platforms. Now, Australians on Thursday, which is today, woke up to find that Facebook pages of all local and global news sites were unavailable. Uh, several government health and emergency pages were also blocked, something Facebook later said was a mistake. Those outside of the country are also unable to read or access any Australian news publication on Facebook. The Australian government has strongly criticized the move, saying it demonstrates, quote, the immense market power of these digital social giants, unquote. Now, Treasurer for the country said the ban on news information had, quote, a huge community impact. Now, about 17 million Australians visit Facebook every month. And what is happening? So basically, they're saying that uh, these platforms make money from the news content produced by publishers. And they want a lot for the platform like Google and Facebook to share. So <coughs> for example, um, of every hundred dollars spent on digital advertising in Australia, 81 of the hundred goes to Google and Facebook alone. Right? So the rest are going to share the 19. <laughs> now, so the law was being drawn up to level the playing field, quote unquote. Mm. But Facebook says the law left it facing a stark choice attempt to comply with a law that ignores the realities of this relationship or stop allowing news content on our service. So basically they're saying, take it or leave it. So those of you every day, we are just throwing your news there for free. It will come here soon. Another story that worries me, Nigeria. This is, in fact, I have two, two websites. BBC says Nigerian gunmen raid a school and abduct boys. Now, if you go to Nigeria itself, one of their former leaders, Abdul Salam Abubakar says, the insecurity in Nigeria could be fatal and the country could head for disintegration. And this is in the Premium Times. Now, a former head of state, Abdul Salam Abubakar, has warned that Nigeria could disintegrate if the violence and other security challenges currently being witnessed in many parts of the country are not curtailed. Now, and you know, these things are becoming very routine in northern parts of the country, where, for example, gunmen killed and abducted a school people. They killed a school people and abducted 27 other children in the nighttime raid of the boarding school in north central nigeria i don't understand now the three members of staff and 12 of their relatives were also abducted about 600 boys were asleep in their dormitories when the school in imagine if your child is in a school like this imagine
imagine when the school in Kagara town in Niger state was raided, the principal said, and you know, we have to be very interested in things like this. When, for example, the president goes to ECOWAS summit and talks about security. We think these things are far away. A lot of, mm-hmm. look at the Takari kidnapping girl story. Mm-hmm. A lot of these things are imported here because of porous bodies. We have over 29 entry points into Ghana, in Ghana and we shouldn't be playing politics with border entry. Look at what's happening in Nigeria. And Abdul Salam Abubakar is telling journalists in Nigeria that if the insecurity is not curtailed, the country could disintegrate. You know, and they're talking about things like arms bearing by headsmen, ethnic mm. crisis, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, the former president, who is a retired general, said the recent spread of violence across the country, if not carefully handled, might lead Nigeria to a point of no return. He called on non-Nigerians, especially the governors of the 36 states, to take full responsibility in managing the divergent voices and frustration within their states, which could fuel disunity, anarchy, and disintegration. And a lot of the things that lead to this, <coughs> we are playing with them here. Yes. You know, yeah. I don't want to go into all the details, but it's a big issue. We need to be serious with security in Ghana. And safety as well. Bennett, very quickly, on the back page of Ghanaian Times, residents and EPA clash over sighting of fuel station. Charlie? Some residents of Abavana, Abavana Junction Ab- there, within Kotobabi, Kotobabi yeah. in the Yawaso Central Municipality yeah. and the Environmental Protection Agency are on a collision course mm. over the construction of a fuel station in the vicinity. The EPA said the sighting of the facility was in compliance with required proximity to public buildings. The residents are insisting that their lives and property are in danger. Now, the disagreement started last September but it manifested yesterday when the EPA undertook a site verification visit in an attempt to put the matter to rest. So per the guidelines of the NPA, for siting a petroleum retail outfit uh, outlet, such a facility should be 60 meters radius mm. to public buildings. Okay. But this is in dispute because the residents are saying that this is a, a second measurement that was done and that previously um, it was too okay. close. Okay, but now EPA is saying, oh, the measurement is fine. It's 80 meters away. So they're still going back and forth on this. But I, this is not the only community where I, this I have a quick a question for you. Who, yeah. Who, was, who, who is the Abavana Junction named after? I don't know. He's a former <laughs> CPP minister. Oh, yeah. I see. It's, yeah, it's called Mr. Abavana Lawrence Rosario. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was a member of the CPP. Interesting, Interesting was, name. Yes, and he was from Navrungu. Rosario. Oh, yes, yeah, Lawrence. Rosario. He's Catholic. Lawrence. <laughs> Rosario Abavana. Okay. Oh, yeah? The big one. This is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation.